Yes, Article 21. Move that the town petition the Great General Court to enact special legislation to expand the town's quota for liquor licenses as delineated in Article 21 of the Warrant of the Special Town Meeting held October 24th, 2013 and incorporated by reference herein. Is there a motion? Is there a second? The finance recommends uh, three in favor. The select board recommends five in favor. This last article, ladies and gentlemen. Selectman DeKevitt. The town has run out of on-premise liquor licenses and we need more to continue our economic development efforts. Each city and town receives a quarter of liquor licenses and Hadley has issued all of its on-premise licenses. There are several major restaurants poised to come to Hadley, but they will not if there are no liquor licenses to hand out. The article petitions the legislator to increase the quarter of liquor licenses for Hadley. More restaurants will result in more jobs, increase economic activity, and more meal taxes for the town's capital program. Thank you. Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street. First of all, how many liquor licenses does the town have now? And how many more are we trying to get? And do we really want that kind of business where you're going to have more drunks on the road? <laughs> Edwin, just because you sell liquor doesn't mean you're a drunk. <laughs> Just a second while we get those answers. Would it be okay if we went to Mr. Maximowski while we're referencing your questions? Mr. Maximowski? I'd like to amend this article. And I'd like to amend beginning under section one, beginning with the words Route 9 Business Zone. I'd like to strike the words Route 9 Business Zone through the end of that sentence and replace them with simply the words allowed zones for the simple reason that liquor establishments in the limited district and local district are regulated quite distinctly and this article almost makes them permitted by right. So simply saying in the allowed zones addresses as appropriate where they should be. Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Ryder, if I could just ask a question of the maker of the motion. When you say allowed zones, Jim, you mean allowed under zoning? Yes. Um, sh should we put it that way? Yeah, allowed under the, oh, that's right. The, so the, let's just see if we have it right. So located, um, so where would it go? Did, were you keeping Route 9 in? No, we're taking out Route 9 only because if we start locating in the zones allowed under the zoning bylaw? Yes. Um, I have a little insight that that may not work. I happen to have the chairman of the licensing committee. Do we even need that sentence in there at all? Um, if you're simply trying to expand the liquor licenses, there's a question, do you need that sentence in there saying where they're going to be? Well, let me ask this question. Uh, what's the harm with the language that's here now? You're saying that they're allowed to have liquor establishment and local business zone. The local business zone doesn't allow liquor licenses and liquor stores in it. Well, let me say this, if this is your concern, the, the fact that people in these specified areas would be eligible for liquor licensing purposes, would be eligible to get a liquor license, does not in any way affect or in enhance their ability to get zoning permission to do it. You see what I'm saying? No. You don't, you don't agree with that? No. No, I, I, I assure you that that's the case. But it, so that is your concern, I take it. Yeah, no, that, it really will have no bearing on it. Um, the fact that, because as it stands now in any community, I mean, put aside the fact that the licenses right now are, are all used up, but if a license would become available, theoretically they're available anywhere in town, but it won't do anybody any good 
to get one in a residential district because they're not going to get um, the zoning permission to do it. And the selectmen, in any event, should be looking at zoning. There's case law on this that uh, if it's clearly not allowed uh, under zoning, it's my opinion that the selectmen could even deny the license for that reason. But certainly, uh, the building inspector would shut them down immediately if they tried. So I, I, I don't see the, the danger that, that concerns you. There was a question earlier about the number. Yeah, Edwards? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No. Thank you. The, the question about the number of liquor licenses, uh, uh, there are, our quota currently allows us to have 14 all alcoholic on-premise licenses. Uh, we have used every single one of those. Uh, for malt and wine on-premise, uh, we're allowed five. Uh, we've used four. For all alcoholic off-premise licenses, we're allowed two. We've used two. And for malt and wine off-premise, we're allowed five and we've used two, so three off-premise malt and wines and one on-premise malt and wine left. And we're trying to get how many? We're yeah. looking for six all-alcoholic on-premise and we're looking for six uh, malt and wine on-premise. Additional. Excuse me, Robert Adair, 359 River Drive. I'm wondering if the question on the zoning issue is to do that we, there are not many, but we have a few businesses that are located in miscellaneous areas throughout town who may at some point want to petition for a liquor license uh, to sell liquor or beer at their local stores, such as uh, not to put out names, but Cooks and Barstow's. I know that one of the issues that some of them was is that they're trying to do locally, local stuff, both of them, and that one of the issues was they wanted to be able to sell local beer. Uh, so I'm wondering if that may be one point where the locals, the zoning issue may be a problem. I'm just pointing it out. Under current rules and regulations, if, would that be allowed? No. no, 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 no. I don't have the zoning bylaw in front of me. Um, Cooks is an ag residential. Barstow is an ag residential. Um, North Hadley Sugar Shack is a limited limited business. I don't know off the top of my head if a limited business might allow that. I heard the question uh, speak more to farmer brewers, farmer vintners. Farmer distillers; uh, those licenses are handled separately by the state and don't aren't part of the quota system. So, uh, uh, if Mr. Barstow's wanted to start brewing and selling from there, um, that doesn't af this legislation doesn't affect that one way or the other. Uh, he's allowed to do so under the state license. Joseph Rodney, Five Meadowbrook Drive. Uh, Jim's concern, I'm also on the planning board, Jim's concern about the planning board uh, and the selectmen, what happens occasionally is the selectmen, for example, will issue permits for so many automobiles and then they'll come to the, have the uh, planning board for a site plan and they cannot fit that many automobiles on such property. And then automatically you get into a legal discussion. The same thing could be true here if all of a sudden a liquor license is granted in a zone that's not permitted, once again we can keep the lawyers busy. So how do we assure that the selectmen are aware of the zoning regulations? What would your recommendation be that the, any liquor license come before the planning board to ensure that it's able to be zoned in that way or do you have a recommendation? I, I don't have a recommendation except that, you know, these people may not be the same people here a few years from now, so. Okay. 
Yes, uh, Sean Kinlan, 278 Bay Road. Uh, I have two questions about uh, petitioning the state for an increase in licenses. One question is, since I'm not familiar with it, is this something that commonly is done for various towns? Have other towns managed to get more liquor licenses than they had before? And the other question is, is there a cost incurred by the town petitioning or lobbying the state that way? Uh, it's not uncommon. A number of communities do this. There are also communities, by the way, that are still dry and that they haven't accepted the, the state liquor laws. And what they do is they petition one by one. I represent a town that now has three liquor license, licenses, though it's technically dry. Obviously, it's not anymore. And so they petition one at a time. And there are communities that seek exactly um, this kind of permission. And secondly, there's no charge. Um, your, your legislators work for free. And um, you just. Thanks, uh, <laughs> John. Uh oh. <laughs> um, there, there's no charge for filing legislation. You just, you know, you put it in the hamper and. Um, I, I didn't know if town staff would have to spend time in Boston, et cetera. No, well, it, it'd be up to the, the town. I mean, sometimes, you know, the a selectman or administrator uh, may go up to the hill, but usually it, it is handled by your legislative delegation. Andy Morris, Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. I guess in Hadley, we don't want you to have parties and we don't want you to smoke pot, but we're going to have 12 more pieces where you can, places where you can go drink. Mr. Moderator, request permission to speak. <laughs> Granted. Um, I'd like to address the issue. I, it's, this is an interesting situation because the request for additional liquor licenses goes, uh, if, if you take this action as soon as Jessica certifies the vote, it goes before the Joint Committee on Consumer Protection and Professional Licensure. And I currently chair that committee. So, so the, the bill would actually come before my committee. Uh, so far this session we have had requests for additional liquor licenses, I believe it was 24 licenses for the city of Quincy. Uh, we've got some before us for Beverly, uh, Brookline, a number of communities. One of the things that we've tried to do, and, and there's some clarification that's necessary because if you take this action, uh, I guarantee that you'll hear from some of the existing license holders. Because there are people in many communities that will wind up purchasing licenses when the licenses are all gone. And the licenses can vary. Licenses can cost 10,000, 20,000. Uh, most recently, a license in West Springfield we hear sold anywhere between 480 and $700,000. That license was sold from a package store to, to Costco, which allowed Costco to sell. But there's a difference in terms of the over quota license. This license is dramatically different from, from any other license that exists in the town. And so one of the things our committee has requested and is essentially required from communities is some very specific information regarding the location. So you can amend this, but we're going to be looking to absolutely have some sort of a range to know exactly where this is going. Uh, now if you purchase, if you get one of these licenses from the town, so if you were one of these restaurants, and, and these licenses, by the way, uh, the first six are for wines and malts, so it's a beer and wine license. The other six are for all alcohol. They're not for package stores, they're for restaurants. Uh, in some other communities, they've been used for bistros and, and various things, pizza places and, and the like. And what we're hearing from communities are people want over quota licenses because a business is not going to commit to come to a community uh, either to build or to sign a lease unless they're sure they can get a license. And we start looking at national chains, and national chain can look at a community and say, well, and that's happened in the eastern part of the state. If I can't get a license in this community, then I'll simply go four or five miles down the road because that, that is within what we see as our population catchment area, and it doesn't have to be, to use this as an example, it doesn't have to be in Hadley, it could be in Northampton, it could be in Amherst, it could be in South Hadley, and the like. But the main difference of this license is, if this license is awarded, once these license are, licenses are awarded, the licensing commissioners award the license to an individual. That license cannot be sold, that license cannot be moved to another location, that license cannot be transferred to another individual. If that business goes out of business, the license then comes back to the town who can issue it again. And the main difference is the other licenses, the, the ones that people pay for or have paid for, are actually in many cases used as pledgeable assets. So someone looks, so for example, the, the, 
Let's look at the tragedy in terms of Meteor. Meteor obviously had a liquor license. Meteor could, if, if they wanted to, essentially try to pledge the value of that license in terms of securing funding to, to try to rebuild. But you could not do this with the over quota license. So while I understand um, Jim's concern in terms of where we're identifying it, what we've done in some communities in, in the town of Braintree, and, and we frequently use it and refer to it as a Braintree language, Braintree tried to get some development by South Shore Plaza, and there was a clear identification of where. Quincy gave us an actual economic development zone. And the purpose of this is to try to improve economic development. So I think if you make some changes, um, and, and the other important thing is the first part of the article talks about the legislature may reasonably vary the form and substance of the requested legislation within the scope, and that means it doesn't have to come back to town meeting. We've had problems with some communities that didn't adopt that language. We wanted changes in, in, in the language, and they had to wait another year to go back to town meeting. But it's going to be important for us to have some identification of exactly what we're talking about. We're not going to, you know, you're, you as license commissioners will determine is this going in an area that is properly zoned. But we simply would not approve 12 additional licenses to go anywhere in the town of Hadley uh, without some specificity. Uh, I hope that helps. Okay. I'd like to address one of the previous speakers. No, we don't smoke pot. No, we don't have parties, but if we get this, yes, we will get meal taxes for our capital plan. Uh, the, the one point in regards to why we need this is because of the restaurants. We do have a number of very large franchises that, that do want to come into Hadley. They will not come here without first knowing that they can get a liquor license. That is the first question that I am asked when I get a call from a developer or one of these large national chains. How many liquor licenses do you have left? Unfortunately, right now, we have none. And we will not get any more restaurants without this vote. And a lot of people have been asking, uh, when is certain restaurants that they really like coming to Hadley? There are a few of them that are on hold because we don't have any liquor licenses. There's two that want to go to the Hampshire Mall, and there's one in front of um, Home Depot, and there's going to be another one in front of uh, um, uh, out near Lowe's. They're all on hold. We've told them that we are actively pursuing these, and we have a very good chance of getting these, uh, but we need your vote first or you're not going to see any more restaurants in town. And that's exactly what um, Mr. Dick Kevitt said. That's our meal tax, and we get a lot of money from that. Thank you. I have two different sides of me here that I want to speak. One is I would like to hear from somebody in the police department about what the impact might be of nearly doubling the number of liquor licenses in town. Uh, the other is, I am a, a fan of restaurants, and I, I think it's great that we would have more restaurants, and I would hope that there would be some process in place so that it's not just all big out-of-town chain stores swooping these up, and that the Mitieras or the uh, Maple Farm Foods or the Barstow's, you know, the local mom-and-pop restaurants have a shot at some of these. Um. To address your question about uh, the police activity as far as doubling the number of licenses, we as the licensing board have total control over that license. If there's an incident at a restaurant that has a license and we think they're doing something wrong, we have the ability to take that license away from them. That firmly rests in our hands as the licensing board. Um, we had an incident at the Chinese restaurant, uh, Japanese restaurant, where a party got out of control. We called the owner in. We said, look, this can't happen ever again. And he took matters to prevent those things. But we have that control. So if the chief of police walks in and says, we're having a problem with this restaurant serving people when they're intoxicated, we call them up, we bring them in, we say, look, we'll take the license from you. We have that control 
totally over that license. We are the licensing authority. We can take it away anytime we want. Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by raising your cards. All those opposed? None against. Motion passes. Any other business before town meeting this evening? Seeing none, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Is it been seconded? Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming tonight, appreciate it.